is it today is about praising God. Today is all about praising God. God love us always celebrate God's value or God's worth. We call that worship or worship, right? And because God has the highest level of value imaginable, we worship him, right? <laughs> when you love someone, you celebrate their value by giving. For God so loved the world that he gave, right? For God so recognized your value, celebrated your value that he gave his only son. Okay, so he believes that you are worth the life of his son, the second person of the Trinity. <laughs> you are created in the image of God, right? So now, this church today is filled with God lovers. People who recognize God's value. So <laughs> there is no limit, right, to our appreciation and celebration of his value. There is nothing we cannot give him. So the highest thing we have is our lives. <laughs> so we give him our lives, right? But then there's this other dimension to what God lovers do. We praise God. And to praise is to celebrate attributes. Okay? So we celebrate the attributes of God. When you think of power, he has the highest level. When you think of wisdom, he has the highest level. When you think of beauty, ah, he has the highest level, right? So you express praise through communication. You say it, right? You commend someone for what they have and for what they can do, okay? Our God is sovereign. Our God is sovereign. <laughs> there is no limit to his power, no limit to his wisdom. And that is all we are here to celebrate today. Is that okay? Mm -mm. So in this service, there's only one thing you've got to do. Keep your focus on God. Because that's what God lovers do. You know? <laughs> when you love someone, that's the person you focus on. That's the person you pay attention to because you want to be sure that the person is okay. And that's what I found all through scriptures, that God lovers, while everything was going on around them, their own focus was on God. To be sure he's okay, to be sure he's happy, to be sure he's getting what he deserves. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so our focus today is on God. All right. And you know what I found out? However bad a situation may be, in this our world, God is present. It's amazing. What you look for is what you find. Sadly, we've been programmed to look for Satan. We've been programmed to look for what is not working. Genesis chapter 1. It says from verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2 says, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. But the verse does not end there. It says, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. That's what I'm talking about. As dark as it was, God was there. <laughs> so this is what happens, therefore, with us God lovers. Even if the whole world is turning upside down, it is God we're looking for, right? And when we focus on him, then we are able to recognize what he is doing, what he is capable of doing, and we are able to praise him. Fantastic. So, in the Bible, there was an exceptional God lover, right? Exceptional God lover. His name, David, right? Hmm. So David comes to the battlefront, and then everybody's talking about 
the Philistine giant. Everybody is talking about the enemy. David's focus is God. There is this gentleman, young man called Joseph in the Bible. It's amazing, right? His brothers betrayed him with the highest level of betrayal. <laughs> you know, you could experience in this world. Then their father died. And then his brothers were afraid that David was going to know. He was now going to exact his revenge. But David made a remarkable statement in, in Genesis 45. He said, I know that you sold me to be slaves. He said, but actually it was God that sent me. Oh, wow. So this is important. When you focus on God, your interpretation of scenario will be more accurate. Instead of seeing obstacles, you'll be seeing miracles. Instead of seeing what Satan is doing, you'll be seeing what God is doing. However bad you may think it is in your life right now, I'm telling you, God is there. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is there. And when you focus on God, the natural thing that will result will be praise. The natural thing that will result will be praise. So Jesus Christ was, you know, teaching this crowd for like three days. And then he said, oh, they had run out of food. And then asked the disciples, oh, where are we going to get bread for these people to eat? And so on. And eventually they told him, oh, there's a boy that has five loaves of bread and two fish. He said, bring them. And the Bible says when he took the loaf and he looked up to heaven and gave thanks. Who does that? <laughs> Who gives thanks when it is not enough? Did you hear me? Who gives thanks when the money is not enough? Who gives thanks when you don't have a job? Who gives thanks when you've not delivered a baby yet? Who gives thanks when you would love to marry, but you've not found someone to marry yet? Who gives thanks when you're a tenant and you're finding it difficult to pay your rent? Who gives thanks when things are not working? Oh, well, I'm going to tell you, God lovers do that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, that's what God lovers do. They keep their focus on God. Praise takes you to God's frequency. And once you tune into that frequency, you download solutions with ease. Second Kings chapter 3, three kings approached Elijah, the prophet. They were about to be attacked. They asked Elijah for help. You know what Elijah said? Second Kings 3 from verse 15. He said, bring me a minstrel. Bring me a musician. Bring me a musician. Let him play on the harp. Let him play on the harp. And they said, as soon as the musician began to play, they said, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Elisha. Took him up into God's frequency. Download. He said, dig ditches, dig ditches. You will see no rain. You will see no water. But these ditches will be filled with water. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Thank you, Jesus. Should I tell you something as, as we pray? Complaining puts you on Satan's frequency. It's a dangerous thing to do. Complaining, it's a dangerous thing to do. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 10 says that we should not complain. In the New Living Translation, it says, and don't grumble as some of them did and then were destroyed by the angel of death. Hey, the more you complain, the less you obtain. The more you complain, the farther away you move from miracles. Christ took what was not enough and gave thanks and praised God. You know the rest of the story, right? That was a miracle. So praise puts you on God's frequency. And in this time, we have adopted a style. We saw some people in the Bible, the ten lepers that Christ healed, and how... <laughs> When they saw they were healed, they said one of them turned back and ran to Christ. And that as he approached the Christ, he lifted up his voice and was shouting and praising God, glorifying God. And Jesus said, wait, 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 wait. Were there not ten healed? Where are the nine? If God has been good to you, you owe God some praise. But the second dimension to it is that praise is the language of faith. Praise is the language of faith. Complaining is the language of negativity. 
Praise is the language of faith. In this service today, ah, we have people who love God shamelessly. So please bear with us if it's your first time and you think, ah, ah, this noise is too much now. Ah, if you knew, if you knew where we were coming from, if you knew what God has done for some of us, and then if you had an idea where God is taking us, <laughs> what is happening in the next one year? What is happening in the next five years? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> because praise is the language of faith. God does not lie. What he has promised he will do, he will do. And so we can as well praise him. So in this dark Christian center, we give God advanced praise. Ah, oh, that governor. <laughs> will you give governor size praise in this service? <laughs> Madam Bilonia, will you give God Bilonia size of praise in this service? Let me to tell someone close by. Excuse me. You may need to give me space in this service. <laughs> This is my celebration day. Hallelujah. All right. So as we go on, please keep the focus on God. But the question I'd like to ask you is, is your relationship with God even okay? Is your relationship with God okay? Because that's the starting point for everything. And the one thing that separates us from God is sin. Sin. No, I'm not talking about doing bad things. I'm talking about the nature every human being is born with. It's automatic. We're born sinners. It's not because we sin that we're sinners. It's because we're sinners already. That's why we commit sin. And God solved that problem, sent Jesus to die for us on the cross. Right? Jesus Christ died for us on the cross, paid for all our sins. <laughs> so it's absolutely unnecessary to allow Satan to continue to plague us with guilt and to run riot in our lives when Jesus already paid the price, right? Good. So all God expects us to do is to ask him for forgiveness. That's, so that's what I want to do right now. So if you're that honest person, can you please put your hand on your heart and let's pray together. You are honestly saying, my relationship with God is not okay. I want God to forgive me my sins. Can you please put your hand on your heart? Say this prayer after me. Dear God, I believe that Jesus paid for my sins. I believe you love me. So I ask you to forgive me and to accept me as your child in Jesus' name. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because you're more than eager to forgive us our sins. And you've had everyone who said this prayer. And a miracle has happened. The Holy Spirit has removed the nature of sin from them and put your nature inside them. And all their sins are forgiven. Their records are wiped, wiped clean. And Christ said there is a party in heaven when just one person does this. So we want to say a big thank you. And we pray, Heavenly Father that you teach them to know you personally, and that you teach them to love you the rest of their lives. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap and thank him for these wonderful people. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. All right. We have very useful information to send to you that will help you with this decision you just made. Our officials gave you a card while we were praying. If you're at any of our physical locations, Fill it with accurate information right away. Leave it on your seat. We'll pick it up as soon as we close the service. Let me tell you something. Satan understands the power of what you just did more than you do. He wants to steal the blessing from you. That's why we want to give you this very helpful information. So please uh, do leave the card behind with your information on it. If you're part of the service online, there's a link in the chat room or a QR code on the screen. Give us your information. We'll send what we have to you via email. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.